Hi everyone, um, a brief introduction about the TCP V2, uh, which differs from the previous version by the manipulation only. All the modes and uh, menu and uh, soft keys are the same, it's just the way you reach them, you manipulate it, that changes. So I just turned on the main switch and automatically the computer will boot the CNC screen and all the other functions. It takes a few seconds to do that. You simply let it boot until you see the CNC screen, the keyboard and the different mode menu. From there, you can reset, lock the door and press the servo start key, which will start the hydrostatic and amplifier and so on. From that moment, you will have the same uh, manipulation as you have to do with the other one. That means first thing I will do is take the reference of all the axes. As soon as I choose a mode, and these modes require a starting action, when it's ready to start the action, the green key will blink here. Eh? So now I choose the reference all mode, it's blinking, I'm ready to go. and it's homing the barrel. When it's done, it goes off. Here I can see now the safety uh, key that is blinking. That's for the double safety check. So it does it when you turn on the machine or every subsequent 24 hours. So now I will just press this button and it will perform the double safety check. Done. So now we can start to look quickly at the different um, ways to manipulate this uh, TCP. Let's take a few minutes to look at uh, the aspect of the, of the TCP screen. We can see here the simulation of the screen of the fan control. Here we have a keyboard and the different mode uh, menu of the machine. Now, regarding the keyboard, I have two different keyboards I can choose from, the standard or the ISO keyboard. Which is interesting is that I can, when I choose the standard, I can also choose my language uh, settings, you see. If you click on this, you will have all the different keyboards that are available and you can change them. Huh? This is from the standard keyboard. ISO keyboard is a little bit more simple. And then also I can have the simple numerical keyboard or even the calculator if I want to. I return to my standard keyboard. Moving uh, the axis of the machine in jog mode. Here if I press jog mode, I will select my axis. I can see here X, Z. So if I select X, I will select which X axis I want to use x1, x2, and automatically it will change the channel here. And then here I have the buttons that will select the direction in which I move in jog. So x minus, x plus, because I have x selected. The same thing is with z, z minus, z plus. I can also move with the hand wheel but if I press the hand wheel, it will not be activated. I have before to select a, an increment. And then of course I select an increment, I select my axis, and then I can select my hand wheel and move my hand wheel in the direction I want with the increment I want. So this is the different manual motions with the new TCP. Moving the axis or programming functions uh, with MDI mode. Here I can choose my MDI mode. And then here I have the program screen that will allow me to program my function. So let's say for example, I want to turn spindle in position two. So I have to be in channel two. And then here I can type from the keyboard M1203. For example, S500 end of block. 
enter. And then when I have finished to program my function, I have entered it, I can see the green start button is blinking, which means it's ready, I can start. And then it's going to execute the function. Also, the MDI mode can be used to turn the barrel from position to position. In this case, I go back to my channel one, and then this key here is the symbol of the barrel. So to be able to turn the barrel, the conditions are the same as with the previous screen. I have to be in reference with all my axes. So I press reference all, and then I can see here my uh, green star button is blinking, so I press it until my axes are on reference. Then I go back to my MDI mode and then I will be able to move my barrel. So I have to press in this case, even if the door is closed and locked, I have to press the confirm button, keep it pressed, and then every time I press on the barrel key, the barrel will move one position. Let's look now on how to operate manually the spindle collets opening and closing. I can do that with the door open. So I press the door unlock button and it allows me to open the door. I can do it from jog mode, it doesn't matter. Then I have two keys here to open and close two different collets. This one is for the counter spindle. I press it and then when the light is on, the counter spindle collet is open. And then I press it again, the light is off, the counter spindle collet is closed. So this one opens and closes the counter spindle. This one opens and closes the spindle that is in front of the counter spindle. So that's the spindle in position six. So I press it, again, light is on, it's open. I press it again, it's closed. Now, this one will open and close the collet that is in position one. But with the difference from this collet here, I have to press the confirm button to be able to operate this one, whether the door is open or closed. So I press the confirm button and then I can open the spindle collet in position one. Same thing to close it, I press the confirm button and then I can close this one. Now this one will let me open and close any collet on any position that I choose with the channel selection. So for example, I want to operate the spindle collet in position three. So I select my channel three and then I will press this button always with the confirm button pressed as well. So here it's open and then here it's closed. This is the little differences I have with the TCP V2 for the opening and closing of my spindle collets. Running the machine in uh, production mode is uh, of course the same as with the previous uh, TCP. Here you will find the memory key. And then when you are in a position where you can start your cycle, the cycle start button will be blinking. Huh? So I start my cycle and my machine will start. Now if I want to make some controls uh, during the cycle, I can like uh, with the previous uh, TCP, I can stop my cycle to check at any time. I just press cycle stop. When I press cycle stop, this will allow me to turn off the oil. And then with the cycle stop being pressed, if I press the spindle override button that you can see here in minus, it will stop my spindles. And from there, I can release the door. I press the door and then I can open the door and check whatever I need to check. And then from there, I can do just the reverse uh, manipulation. I close the door. I lock the door. 
and then I press the spindle override button in plus direction which will restart my spindles and then from there I can simply press cycle start again and my cycle will restart. Switching between the screens on the TCP V2 it's also very easy. Now I have my uh, Fanuc uh, screen uh, reproduction here. If I open TB Deco, for example, I click on the TB Deco icon. Here I have my uh, TB Deco uh, introduction page icon. I want to have it in the full screen. I just press here and I have it in the full screen. Now, if I want to go back to my uh, keyboard, my uh, menu keyboard and my Fanuc screen, this key here will switch back the Fanuc screen and this key here will switch back the keyboard and the different menu modes. Huh? If I press this button here, I can uh, have my uh, screen mode split in a different ways. If I press it again, it comes back to what I had in my previous selection. Also, uh, the same thing is if I want to um, send a program from TB Deco into the Fanuc control, I will be doing that into the edit mode. Since this is also a computer screen, I can also look into my uh, Windows Explorer and then you will be uh, familiar with all the functionalities of Windows. And like here on my task bar, I can see here also uh, some um, menu options. Look, search for, Explorer. And then uh, me to uh, make my life easier, I have also uh, hooked up a wireless keyboard. Sometimes it is more easy to uh, type from the wireless keyboard than it is from the, from the keyboard of the touch screen here. Uh, since we are uh, talking about plugins, I have uh, four uh, USB ports uh, to introduce or uh, save some programs on the memory sticks. So I have two uh, USB ports below here and then I have uh, one USB port here and one on the other side of the screen.